have <coughs> new on another story in the paper before we take a break. The front page of the Daily Nation, search on for Ooko's successor as the Auditor General's term comes to an end. Finding a replacement will be a tough balancing act. And if you turn to, it uh, should be page eight, eight. I believe that's yeah. where you find that story. Um, there we go. Hunt on a picture there of uh, Ed Edward Ooko, the Auditor General at a past event. He prepares to vacate office in the next two months after an eight-year term. The biggest concern for many Kenyans is the person who will succeed him. Already intense lobbying has started, presenting a tough balancing act for the president. And you can get more details about that. He will leave office with memories of the many battles he fought to counter efforts to cut him down to size. Politicians tried cutting his office budget, infringed on his independence, and went after his staff. Let me get a reaction from my guest now, Governor Wangamati. Your thoughts? How would you term the performance of the Auditor General as he exits uh, that office? <laughs> Um, well, uh, I think uh, I must say that Edward has, I mean, I know Edward as a person. Um, you know, okay, you know him personally? Uh, I know him personally, and um, as a professional, I think he has done a fantastic job. Uh, of course, that office is, is a very difficult office. Uh, it's an office that, uh, you know, uh, there's too much focus on it. <coughs> but as, um, as, a, as a department within government, uh, where we sit as count governments, we believe that uh, you, you know they, they need to be additional resources to, to be put in that department to ensure that whoever comes in after Edward does a fantastic job. Okay. Um, I think the auditing of public finances is a very serious role within the PFM Act. It's a very important role, and uh, whoever comes in uh, should be given the resources to do that job very well. I think he has done a fairly good job, and we look forward to working whoever. Any, we any weaknesses? <coughs> You've mentioned uh, staff shortage, possibly. Some governors might have felt targeted by his office, even recently. Uh, I, think, I think what happened recently was <coughs> um, especially what happened to uh, my colleague, Waititu, in Kembu, uh, but also I think the other about like 11 counties where there was a mix-up in the financial statements, uh, you know, some of the things that are functions that are being done by national government, finding themselves in the county government uh, uh, accounts. There are I places think. where you can make mistakes, Governor, but surely such a high office, you, you're almost not allowed to make such mistakes. But I think, but I think my, my, my understanding is that those issues rotated around the ethnics. Okay. Um, and I think the treasury came out very clearly, and I doubt whether the problem was with the Auditor General or not. But I think that was very unfortunate. Um, and I think as a Council of Governors, we, we issued our own statement over it. And, um, but I think where we sit is we want to see auditing of financial statements done promptly mm -hmm. after the end of the financial year so that we are able then to, you know, to move on and, and, and use those financial statements for our own purposes and for even uh, looking for funds from donor agencies. Mm -hmm. So um, I, th I think that is where the issue of resources come in. We would like to see... Uh, uh, Auditor General's office that is able to perform and perform on time so that you know it doesn't take so long to get fun audited financial statements. Like now, I think it takes uh, Governor, it takes about what about six months after the financial almost one year, yeah, after almost six, months. six months, one year, one year, mm. uh, to, to get audited financial statements, which mm. is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should be done within six months. And, the end of financial and that right there leads me then to my next question for mm. Governor Kodana. Then, are you worried that um, with the appointment of a new AG and control of budget, that that delay, if there is, if there will be one, will then go ahead to affect the approval of budgets as well as the auditing? Um, <coughs> is that a concern that you might have? Um, not really, but uh, just to pick on one point uh, that. Uh, Governor Angamati has said that uh, the Auditor General Office is, is one very critical one. And um, they have their own challenges. I remember when we came in, we tried to engage the Auditor General to try and uh, help us audit some of the accounts within the account so that we can have a, um, 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 a good takeoff. And one of the things he told me is that uh, I have a lot of challenges. Uh, I need to look for other private firms to, um, uh, so that we can put together teams that can be able to go to counties to uh, do some of the jobs. So as much as we are looking at bringing in someone, which I believe they are people with competencies that can be able to probably match 
uh, the performance of uh, the outgoing Rupture General. But we also need to look at how best can we then strengthen the Office of the General to be able to perform in the manner that all of us expect. Um, as to whether that one would then affect um, approval, budget, approval any budget, budget processes, on that, uh, yes. uh, I, I don't think there would be because this is an office. Yeah. It has people. Um, they have uh, um, equally uh, grown through the system. Um, uh, it's just a matter of handover, takeover pro process. Uh, but I don't think it will affect so much about um, appro budget approvals and all that. I don't think so. And speaking of budget approval, we've seen, of course, Edward Oko come at, under fire from governors in terms of wastage within counties. Petitions have even come out to make sure there's outstart. If the next uh, Attorney General comes in in the fight against corruption, would you support him? Would both of you support him? Is it him or her? Him or her. <laughs> him or her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I think it is important, and because that's a very 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 good question. We support. Mm -hmm. You know, when you took over the when you, when when I took over the leadership of uh, governorship of Bungoma County, I think it is important to note that all governors want to run counties in a way that we manage our resources in a very prudent way. So there's the issue that uh, this perception that is there that governors are reluctant to be accountable. No, we are very much, we want to be accountable for the resources that first we get from national government and also the, for the resources that we collect locally from our, own, uh, from our own counties. So anybody who comes, we'll work with them to ensure that if there are any loopholes, if there are any issues that we need to address as counties, yes, and they can help us to address those issues, very much willing to do that. And I think this perception that uh, we condone mm -hmm. corruption in counties. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, if there, if there are any government institutions that are monitored, that there's so much accountability, mm -hmm. as we speak now, is counties. Because there's too much focus on counties. Mm -hmm. There's too much focus on counties. As I told you, the national budget this year is 2.7 trillion. <laughs> Just less than 10% is going to counties. But when you look at the focus of this 10%, mm -hmm. <laughs> that says they focus on the remaining 90%. Yeah. There's too much focus. And yeah. the reason is that we are closer to people. We are closer to the and so it's easier the for to scrutinize. So it's easier for the human rights mm. organizations, easier for the journalists in the counties to focus <laughs> on that 10%. I'm telling you there's too much focus. I mean, when you look at the, 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 the issues that are happening at a national level, uh, when you look at the, you know, if today someone asks you what is happening in the Ministry of Water, most likely people will not know. But today, if you ask somebody what is happening mm. in Tana, Tana River yeah. County, yeah. to do with water, to yeah. do with yeah. water, for example, they would know. They would know. <laughs> so the focus <laughs> is there. And, and it's good for us. And yeah. we are ready for it. And yeah. we are more than willing to ensure that the way we manage our resources are done and done in a very prudent way. All right. All right. Yeah. I think that uh, you're not. You're not yeah, yeah. I, wait, think, I think it's all about perception. Um, and I'd look at it uh, from probably different perspectives. One, it's not just about the civil society organizations, but it's because one, we had um, um, governors that came out from the uh, previous government. We have senators who, had, who have uh, nowadays wanted to be governors. So you have a lot of opponents. Uh, yeah, we have now, <laughs> it's, it's, and this is very strict. Because they are even public service okay. officials. Okay. Uh, people who are working Good. in ministries and governors. Allow me to interrupt you. Who want to be governors? Now have, they are all campaigning. <laughs> even. Governor, I'm told we have a slight <laughs> issue that we need to fix with, with one of the mics. So let's take a break. Hold that point because we'll start with that when we come back. You're watching Daybreak. Uh, thank you so much, everyone who's weighing in on this discussion. 2242 is the SMS line. The hashtag is Daybreak. We'll take a look at your feedback on the other side of this break. But uh, we'll be right back.